but I thought I would start from the ground up because this is the hood, but there's a lot of places that you can get that are maybe not aesthetically cool, but if your funds are low, you can uh, move in. This is where I started after my divorce. My moving to Atlanta story was pretty normal. I, I came here, I was in the military, so I had money and I had a place to stay. So I didn't really come here without some assistance. But later in life, <laughs> went through a divorce and ended up homeless. That created some very different perspectives and some very different experiences. So what I'm going to do is kind of take you through the hood. And the hood is um, pretty interesting. You know, you've got a lot of stuff that's going on here. And when I say the hood, it's just a collection of poor people. But there can be some interesting stuff that jumps off because you also have a collection of highly dysfunctional people, a large collection of mentally ill people, and the collection of criminals. A lot of criminals, drug dealing, so on and so forth. But you can... You know, this is just how I ended up here was I had no choice. It was all that I could afford. This is how I ended up here. And all right, are you guys? There we go. Good Lord. All right. So we begin, as I was saying before, I was solely rudely interrupted. This is a mix of poor. And it's, it's kind of crazy because there's some very high-end property in the hood. But there's some also some very low-end property. Like, um, let's see. Like this little area that we're about to go through. It's gone through some gentrification because you will see, like, really cheap stuff. And then you'll see some expensive things. And you also... One of the things about the hood, you have a lot of character. You, you really do. Uh, usually the houses are not the same. Like uh, what we're about to, like this garage. Well, you can't really see it. But one of the things, like this little area that we're going through here, they have lofts. Like this building that's here on the left, they've got like little condos. They've put living spaces there. This building that's to the right, 1528 or 26. There's, they've turned that into living space and lofts. And then you've got like these little broken down places that are empty and abandoned. But what I'm going to do is take you toward, to where I used to live in the neighborhood that I lived in after the divorce. Because, like I said, I came to Atlanta. I was in really good shape. I was in the military. Had a monthly check. Actually, I think we got paid twice a month. And I had a place to stay and a place to eat. So it wasn't a typical situation of you just packing up your bags and moving to Atlanta. So we're going to talk about starting at the bottom. I think, I think that's just where a lot of people are going to be. And... If you play it right, and I'm going to give you some tips here on how to live in the hood, because if you're coming to Atlanta with, let's say, 10, 15 grand, I want you to understand that the average apartment in my neighborhood, which is an upscale neighborhood, us uh, 1,000, you can find a few for nine, eight-ish for just a one-bedroom or a studio efficiency. A uh, two-bedroom is 1200 to 2700 and rent is going up. Rent's not coming down. It's going up. Uh, probably doing a separate video where I used to live um, many, many years ago. But what we're going to do is go through the situation where I was living in the boarding house. And I wouldn't recommend the boarding house, but if your money is funny... 
uh, it was costing me 150 a week, utilities and all this other stuff. So it was like 600 bucks a month for a room. And I had access to like two bathrooms. That's where we are now because this neighborhood has changed a lot. It's gotten a little bit better. This Kroger has been here forever. It's right in front of us. And then we're going to go to where I used to live. I'm going to... I don't know if I'm going to knock on the door. It's been so long since I've been there. It has been... Wow. It has been 18 years. I got out of there 1999. It's been 18 years since I... Wow. That's a long time. This Shell Station has been here forever. I'm quite sure the Dunkin' Donuts, they actually built that when I moved in here. All right. Now, one of the things is, like here on the left, that's something that's been there for a while, but apparently they've kind of cleaned it up. Uh, when I was here, a lot of contractors were moving in and turning houses into boarding houses or studios or some of these houses so big you can actually section them off and turn them into multi-family two three units now you'll see a lot of people I used to ride that no 67 yes I used to ride that bus quite a bit now some of these houses are still the same like this house right here on the corner well it's a multi-unit family living situation still the same some of these houses are like really really big they're like crazy big but they're cheap comparably to the rest of Atlanta and another thing is this neighborhood is literally five ten minutes from downtown Atlanta it really is and that lot has been empty I think you could probably have like three or four houses there or more it's been empty since I used to live here this thing over here is still the same. It's pretty much the same. You know, you'll see a lot of people walking around. All right, so I don't know if we can see it, but I used to live, good Lord. All right, uh, I'm gonna have to do something real crazy so you can get a full, the full Monty. <laughs> I hope I don't get shot. I really do. All right. Come on. All right. So, that's it. That's it. That blue house. I used to live there. Uh, it still looks like it's a boarding house situation. I don't know if the same cat owns it, but if he has, there's approximately... Um, eight rooms or nine rooms depending on how he wants to part it out and nine times 600 you do the math you know the rent's clearly more now I'm not going to even uh, mess with this dude here because I don't know he kind of looked like two chains but yeah that's where I used to live 600 bucks a month I remember when this building here on the corner was a burnt out shell they came in they rehabbed it uh this yellow building one night because there's some Muslims I'm actually going to take you to that park the Muslims and the motorcycle game got into it because the motorcycle game used to deal drugs and the Muslims here they had this little section and I'm, I'm going to go through it where just it's real nice it's like a rose in the middle of a desert and it starts with this park And this is kind of like the Muslim enclave where, uh, or it used to be, I don't know, where they actually protected the neighborhood. I forget his name, but they said he shot these two Atlanta cops who was trying to serve him a warrant. I don't really believe that. I met the dude. He was really nice. He's very civic minded. And I think he just got set up. But yeah, this area has always been nicer, well kept. No, it's not that bad, and I'm, like I said, you know, if you could just remove the crime from this area, it wouldn't be that bad, but this is where you can start off and live really cheaply, 
very affordably and just looking at the cars you got a lot of students that live here because the AU Center is literally around the corner I mean literally around the corner I'm not just saying that and I'm gonna show you where I almost got jacked I was coming home from the Marta station because you know, it's uh, one of the reasons I chose this area is I didn't have a car and I needed access to a hot martyr line and a hot martyr, a hot martyr line is one where the buses run consistently if you're going to try to work two or three jobs you got to be near the hot points where there's consistent buses all day long because if you move somewhere and martyr runs you know because in the morning it all runs pretty quickly but the West End talent show they still got that stuff going on Marta will make you late Marta will make you late for your regular job so I moved here intentionally because uh, if I needed to it's like a 15 minute walk to the Marta station now you see this guy here no not there and there's a homeless person I don't know if you can see that who's just sprawled out but right here I was coming home and yeah I turned on the people street because I was right about here and then they just started yelling at me they were in like a 1968 Impala and there was a lot of weed coming out of the car a lot of weed and I, I didn't say nothing to them I didn't know them and then the car stopped because the music started getting louder ch -ch boom ch -ch boom I was like what the hell so I just took off running and they were looking for me I, I don't think anything good was gonna come from that and I'm gonna run this light almost ran it I was kind of under it and this is the famous West End Mall I mean it is a shadow of what it used to be it really is now this is where I came in when I was going to Fort McPherson it was um, this place was popping I mean there was all these businesses a lot of this stuff is shuttered shut down and you it, it's sad what happened because there used to be so much greatness here but you can move in this neighborhood 600 to about a thousand bucks a month in various capacities uh, the boarding house is still open I, I don't know if Anthony still owns it and Anthony owned about nine of them so I'm quite sure he's a real estate millionaire this bank is closed some stuff still going on at, at the mall but I'm going to take you up here to the Marta station because if you're going to move here and your money is funny you need to get a place that is close to a frequent Marta running um, what is it? Well, Marta just runs all the time like you can see right there there's the station and that's very important if you're trying to hustle uh, do not move out to Decatur I mean well once again it depends upon your situation you may not have a choice but you want to be close to Marta if you don't have a car. And I urge you to come here with a car. I strongly urge you to come here with a car. And what are you people up here doing? The light's green. And you just... Oh, man. And then from New York, just sitting there. Just driving is very interesting. Uh, this place on the corner used to be Krispy Kreme. Then Krispy Kreme actually moved down the street and opened up a big bodacious shop. And this used to be, oh, this is Wells Fargo. This used to be First Atlanta, then it was Wachovia, then it became Wells Fargo. During, the, during these recessions, a lot of banks tend to buy other banks. But I uh, kind of wish I hadn't came this way, thanks to Mr. New York. We're sitting up here, and it's, it's really busy. There's a lot of people, only time that they can shop or get their stuff done is on the weekend. So the mall will be empty. I mean, the mall will be packed. You have a lot of stuff that's going on. And, oh, y'all all going that way. Well, look at y'all. All right, so I was coming through the West End, like all of that over there in front of the Mars. There was nothing but vendors and shops. I mean, this whole plaza just completely covered with them. They were selling incense. They were selling 
fruits. They was the, the nation of Islam was real strong back then. I mean, seriously, all the way up here, there would be these pop-up tents and vendors would be selling their stuff. It was incredible. And, and for me, coming from Hawaii, I had never seen that kind of commerce with uh, black folks. And it was just awe-inspiring. I think that's one of the reasons that I'm an entrepreneur is I saw it being done. All right. I'm going to have to drive like my normal self because I'm trying to drive like uh, a person who's uh, narrating stuff. But people drive crazy in Atlanta. Just know that. They drive crazy. They drive real crazy. I don't even know why you know this is funny. And all of this used to be open and thriving businesses. All of this. There was nothing shut down. There was always cars. And my opinion of what killed Atlanta was the emergence of crack. Crack hit this place very, very hard. It devastated communities and is not returned. Now, with that said, that you can find, because you know, I'm gonna do another video called Where the Wealthy People of Atlanta Live, because I had a lot of people like, man, you didn't go here and you didn't go there. Oh, the flea market, that's still bumping. And I'm gonna break down this with some information. I'm gonna break it down with facts. I live in one of the top 10 wealthiest zip codes in Atlanta. So when I say this is where the rich people live, I'm not just saying that to say that. And I don't think folks really understand. And I got a drone. I don't know, it's broken now. I gotta turn it in and get it fixed. But I may pop out the drone for that one because you you really don't understand. <laughs> oh, apparently they are together. All right, so this is where I came into Atlanta. I'm gonna actually show you the interest of Fort McPherson, which is all boarded up right now. Because there used to be two entrances. Uh, there used to be this entrance that's going to come up down here, which you probably won't be able to see unless I let you know early. Man, that house is burned down. I mean, it's just exactly the same. Now, a lot of those houses over there are abandoned. All right. This is Fort Mac. You can kind of see the fence. But. And he, Tyler Perry, bought this whole place. It's just amazing. Uh, this was where Colin Powell was. I think there's enough room for me to turn around. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Alrighty. I didn't know this was open. Uh, I'm just going to kind of sit here because apparently they got some stuff going on. But this is uh, very interesting. Oh. Hold on. There's a... Okay, thank and you. I'm talking about the exit out, right? Yes. All right. All right, so we can get on Fort Mac. I used to, we used to run PT and stuff around here. This was crazy. Um, redevelopment authority. This is wild. It used to be Force Com there. And it's just nothing. Okay. <laughs> this is this is kind of crazy. Oh, I actually went the wrong way. But yeah, this is where uh, Operation Desert Storm was run out of. There used to be all these flags for all this stuff. This is crazy. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. 
um, yeah, she <laughs> she's there waiting on me. <laughs> All right, got it. And they got things that will jack up your tires if you try to back out. Well, that, that's part of Fort Mac. Apparently, Tyler has got some stuff going on there. Another homeless person. You know what? I was going to go back, but I'm going to actually take you to where I left that house and where I ended up. Because it's not that far away. It's not that far away at all, really. And this is the Fort McPherson Marta Station. Many fun memories are there. I don't know if you know who Shirley Franklin is. She used to be the mayor of Atlanta. She had a daughter that looked just like her. And she used to ride the train in this, from the station. And that, that girl, oh my gosh, she was just so fine. She was so cute. All right, so we will be going through East Point, the point which has gone through a lot and it's kind of, it's emerging and it's growing. Well, I'll, I'll show you some of that stuff. And this is another place, like now, if you see the Marta stations like right there, if you get a place that's close to Marta and you're trying to work two and three jobs, it's going to be very helpful or you're going to need a car. You're preferably going to need a car because even if you're doing Marta, you're going to need a car very soon because this is a car city Everything is so spread out. Oh, and this is like ultra cheap living. You know, you can get in a roommate situation over here real cheap. You can get an apartment over here kind of cheap because the closer you are to the AU Center, the more expensive that it's going to get. So that's something you should be aware of because there's a lot of college students in that neighborhood, but you can clearly get something under a G a month. And one of the reasons that people leave Atlanta is they have no support. They come here by themselves and they stick it out a year and all they do is work and go home. Or they may go out every now and then. Uh, I remember when they built this building over here. It was very interesting. Wow. That building's gone. That used to be like a car dealership. Uh, this crystal's been here forever. This is Trot. Well, you can't see it, but over there across the street from the crystals, across the railroad tracks, is Tri Cities High School where Out Outcast got together. Uh, we may go by there. Yeah, I'm just kind of reminiscing because uh, I have not been here in so long. Oh building something. I don't know what it is. I think they're apartments. Because East Point's going through some growth, but they've just got a lot of the same things. A lot of the same houses. I mean, it's changed, but it also hasn't changed. It's just uh, my opinion that the hood, once you're in the hood, or you're dealing with a hood type situation, it's very hard to eradicate the elements that make it the hood. I don't care how many expensive houses you put in the hood. You still are going to have those elements of poverty, drug addiction, mental illness that are just going to keep it the hood. And this is apparently, I don't know what this is. I think this is a restaurant. Did I make a big mistake? I surely did. Yep. I made a big old mistake. All right. So, I keep forgetting this is like a one way. Well, I forgot. I haven't been over here in a while. But, or to take you to the house of where I used to live. And it was, uh, I left that place and then moved to this place, which we should be able to get to 
after so many stoplights. I don't know what these uh, African symbols are. I, they've been here forever. Whatever this is, what is this? It's uh, let food be your medicine. Okay, I, I kind of feel that. I kind of agree with that. This has been essentially the same. Not a lot of change. Citizens Trust Trust Bank right there. For one of you, for those of you who want to bank black. I remember I tried to get an account with them a long time ago and they said no. They were like, no, you can't have a checking account here, boy. Not you. Not you. Nope, 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 nope. That used to be a Hardee's, which is now Fish and Wings. That's crazy. Maybe I'll go down there next time. You see a lot of people walking around here. This is relatively new, this CVS. And if you will notice something that both the places that I was living in I had ready access to a MARTA station that is very very important when you're planning your move to Atlanta and you don't have a car uh, I suggest you come here three or four times before you move and you find you kind of get a lay of the land because this is the problem that happens to so many people they'll move to Atlanta and they'll get a place to stay right then they'll get a job and that job would be 30 minutes to an hour from where they live that's why I say you know rent um, you know a lot of people come down here and try to buy a house and they end up getting a house in what I call a booty neighborhood I'm gonna do a video called the wealth zone places in Atlanta where you can buy a house and never lose money I'm gonna do that because uh, I've seen it there's just some places you just not you're never gonna lose money if you buy a house there now there's gonna cost you but you're never gonna lose money and if you don't get in by the skin of your teeth uh, you always be in a situation where you can liquidate and not be harmed too much or actually make some money this is one of the main things that happen people come to Atlanta they get all caught up in in the nightlife they get caught up in the the imagery of Atlanta, the imagery of Atlanta and the reality of Atlanta are very, very different. Very, very different. And you have so many people who don't know the difference until they, they move here, they start operating, and then it's just like, oh my God, I did not know that this was like this. I didn't know that it was so crazy. They built those townhomes in this red light. Houses are the same. Now here's a nice commercial property. They're trying to sell it. So you got to come here with a business that's already up and running. Or you got to have some skills before you buy a property like this in this neighborhood. Because, you know, you can't see it. But I'm going to talk about it. Uh, there's a lot of things that can be done with that property. But... You gotta be already up in business and expanding. Because trying to start, unless you're just extremely well capitalized. And I'm just amazed that uh, this dialysis clinic, I remember when they built it about 15 years ago and it's still in business. Uh, these apartments, I remember when they built those. There is a um, extended stay motel that has been there longer than I've been in Atlanta and Roy Barnes governor former governor of Atlanta he owns that it's probably paid off all right so just kind of take you a little bit through Jefferson Park because this is one of the weirdest things about Atlanta is you'll have jewels in the middle you know diamonds in the middle of the sea of trash because all around this area is the hood and I remember when they built these houses because they're all relatively new. Well, well over 10 years. 
and they just kind of threw them up because to be because they're now officially in Jefferson Park. Now Jefferson Park is a was it's a it's a older it's a historic neighborhood. That church has been there forever. That's where we used to have our community meetings. That's where I met a lot of people. And a lot of these houses are paid for. Old folks are still in them. And when they sell them, it's going to be crazy. Alright, so this is... This was me moving up from the... There was this chick that lived in this house over here. Oh my God. I felt like a king when I moved here. All right, so this is the house right here. And we'll kind of angle it since there's nobody here. That's the house. Now that house has an apartment and an attic so you can make money three different ways in that place and apparently they've replaced the door there's an air conditioner hanging out the window that wasn't there it has central heat and air oh oh my goodness a gay person oh yeah this neighborhood has a lot of gay people in it a lot so that's that's really okay. Hold on, I'm playing with my camera. All right, well, that's your little tour. And a lot of these little houses. I remember this guy, Alex, he was a plumber. I met him here, he was working on this house. But yeah, that's it. That's uh, the continuation of this story but be sure to subscribe because I will be breaking down all kinds of stuff about Atlanta from a more earthy level now it's funny I used to want to live in this neighborhood for a long time because you know coming from that boarding house and coming from that neighborhood and moving over here uh, these houses were probably in the twos, the 182s. I don't know what they are now. I'll have to look later. And it was just such a come up to get out of that situation and to live like a normal person. And that, that was one of the journeys that I went through of just falling so far. And just, you know, it felt like an achievement to live like a normal person. And then, you know, you have a question like, what is normalcy now? What is it to live like a normal person? What is it to be middle class? Stuff like that. But yeah, that's my journey. Uh, I will show you before I go how close this is to downtown Atlanta. Because you saw where the house was, right? And I did get a car while I was living here. <laughs> I'm speeding like a demon. That's what happens when you have over 500 horsepower. It's, you wanna, you wanna let the ponies run. You wanna let them do what they can do. There's a few new things up here because one thing about the hood is you can pull off stuff in the hood that you can't pull off in nicer neighborhoods. Uh, if you want to run a business, like a, a business at your house, you can easily do it in the hood. <laughs> you can easily do it. Actually, you'll become a neighborhood resource. It's kind of funny how that happens. All right. Let's see. Cool. You're getting out the way. And you're getting back in the way. All right. I'm going to show you just how close and this is why some of this property in this neighborhood is crazy expensive. I used to get auctions at that place. Used to, it, it was hit or miss. It was, really was. All right. Doesn't seem to be too much trouble.
traffic. Also, you know, just a little story. Well, we leave Fort McPherson. We always came this way because we were going to Sensations out in Decatur. That club was bumping. Now it's like a country western music place. But man, we used to be five, seven cars deep all going to the club. Good times. I can only imagine what folks are doing to the club now. <laughs> Popping bottles, doing crazy stuff. All right. So you see, not a lot of time has elapsed, right? But we are um, getting very, very close to downtown Atlanta. Everybody seems to be moseying today. Because normally, they're flying. I can understand why this gritty ambulance is not moving too fast. juncture literally four or five minutes from downtown Atlanta so this is what makes this area highly desirable if you work downtown Atlanta if you have to catch Marta once again you can literally get to work in 30 minutes on Marta that's from your doorstep to the bus to your job if you're working somewhere in downtown Atlanta uh, Georgia State you can get there very quickly like Georgia State maybe 15 minutes so, this is why everybody's just moving kind of slow, so I, I need to speed this up. One of the tricks I learned about speeding is when you speed in the right-hand lane, your chances of getting caught are less because the cops are looking for you to be speeding in the left-hand lane. Now, also, I should say you got to be real careful because we're now in the city of Atlanta, and the city of Atlanta traffic fines are ridiculous. They're ridiculous. I mean, oh my God, and they will they will hold on to you. I had a situation where my license got suspended because of a ticket I got in 1987. I am not kidding you. 19, I'm sorry, 1997. And they were holding up, they, I mean, this was about four years ago. Oh crap. Remember what I said about <laughs> there could be a traffic jam anytime, anywhere. So. Well, we could just scratch the, I mean, you can see the Atlanta skyline. It's not that far away. Something happened. There's an event. I, this can happen. What is it? It is um, like 2.20 on a Saturday afternoon, and we have a traffic jam. This is what I'm talking about. It can happen anywhere in Atlanta. It can happen anytime. I know one night years ago, we were coming home 1.30 in the morning. Ran into a traffic jam. There was an accident. Had traffic backed up for miles. A lot of people here. Um, it's very interesting how this 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 goes down. That this this happens a lot. You just rolling, think you can make it, and then pow, traffic. So what was was going to be four minutes is probably going to be fifteen to twenty now. Maybe, I don't know. It just depends on where the stoppage is, what's going on. If it's an accident, once we clear the accident, it won't be that long. But if it's not an accident, and see, there's some, sometimes the traffic will just happen like this, and there's no accident. There's there's no re You don't know why. You're just like looking for the accident. Look, and there's, there's nothing. It's just a big blog, block, a block or blog of traffic. I thought they tore that down. That's the old stadium. Right there, the uh, where the Braves used to play before they moved them up to Cobb County. <laughs> they have been trying to get rid of the Atlanta, they've been trying to get the Atlanta Braves out of downtown Atlanta for the longest because essentially where the stadium is, it's in the hood. <laughs> it's in the hood. I mean, the neighborhood around it. Yeah, they've got a few expensive houses and stuff, but it's the hood. And it was funny, like when I when I was poor and I had to ride Marta, I could always tell when there was a Braves game in town because there'd be all these white people in Marta. It's like, oh, there's a Braves game today. Yeah, it sure is. Yes, it is. 
<laughs> so, all right. Um, we'll just ride this out. And this is, oh, it's about to start raining. All right, so I need to get over and I'm just gonna take it because I'm not trying to go to the, the deck. Well, yes, my friends, this is uh, Atlanta. If you want to move here, I urge you to get a car. I've said that, what, no less than 10 times? I think, um, oh, there's a circus. See, there, there's nothing. There's no accident. There's nothing. It's just, and this is one, two, three, four. It's four lanes, including the HOV lane. Just a traffic jam. No rhyme, no reason. It's going a little faster. That's four lanes, including this lane over here, which I think is going to disappear. I think it's about to go bye-bye. Let's see. Now you can see the city of Atlanta. I mean, literally, it's what, a mile away? Okay. I'm just, I think I need to get in this lane. That, that's just kind of weird how that happens. But this is what you go through. Living in the ATL. And this guy, he wants to get over. He's, he's just straddling the white line. So there's some building going on down there. Like I said, I don't really come downtown Atlanta because I hate coming downtown Atlanta because parking is expensive. There's nowhere to park. People will be driving all crazy. So I really don't come down here. I pretty much stay in my bubble, my neck of the woods. Believe it or not, we're, we're downtown Atlanta. Yep, uh, Georgia Dome, five points is not too far away. As you go, you got Edgewood, Auburn Avenue, J.W. Dobbs, half a mile. We're downtown Atlanta. Now, it, it's not that big. It's not that big at all. You will be through this sucker in a heartbeat. All right. Two thirty, Saturday afternoon, traffic jam. This can happen on a Sunday. This can happen Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday. It can happen any time, any day. Now, what's weird is sometimes Friday, because people get off so early and they leave so early, that it's kind of clear around five. I don't know if you can see it, but you got Grady over there. Don't know why we're in traffic, but we are. And you, if you notice, downtown Atlanta, you really don't see a lot of luxury cars when you're coming from the south side. And you know, I don't know if you've noticed that and picked up on it. There aren't that many. There's a reason. Uh, the south side of the town, people make a lot of money. Uh, there's like places, there's spots like Stockbridge, the spots like Noonan, but once again, you got to be in a nice situation to afford those houses because the houses are pretty priceless down there. They really are. All right, I'm going to end this vlog here because uh, I was going to take y'all home to meet with me, but who knows how long that's going to take. And my battery's about to run out, so if you like these vlogs, be sure to comment, bring some stuff up, talk about what you think is moving to Atlanta and understand if you ain't in the hood you're paying a lot of money you're paying a lot of money shoot you, you can pay a lot of money in the hood all right catch you folks later